Hey guys, and welcome to another episode with Tinker and Timmy. So today, you're going to be seeing the install of the lithium setup in my Jayco Expander Caravan here. If you want to see an overview of all the components that I'm using, jump on and check out episode one. That runs you through every single bit of equipment in full detail. Today's about the install. So you're going to see how I terminate all my cables, fused, and try and get my cables running nice and neat. So first off, I've been running my cable in, trying to get it in nice and neatly under the Jayco here all hidden and looking factory. So I've got my Red Arc Battery Management 30 set up in the one of, underneath one of the club lounges. I ended up putting a bit of plywood on the back of it and I glued and screwed that to the original Jayco framing just because the weight of the unit I didn't want the screws pulling out of the timber so I get a bit more purchase on the screws. I'm close to a 240 power point and it's also close to the other services I'm going to be running to the Red Arc unit like the solar input, DC input and it's also within the one and a half meter that Red Arc recommend from my battery. So we jump over to the other side and under this side of the club lounge I have my 120X iTech Weld lithium battery 120 amp hour. So that battery is the same size as, you, as a normal AGM that would be fitted to a caravan of anything of 105 to 120 amp hour capacity. So that sits nicely as a drop in replacement in that box. And then in behind that, just on, just screwed to the wall there, I've got the 1000 watt iTech Weld pure sine wave inverter that I've just screwed to the wall, nice and close to the battery. So the cable runs short because these do draw some big power. So yeah, let's get some cable and sorted out so I can get this thing up and running, eh? So I've just been going along and crimping all my terminals onto these big cables and that. This is the first time I've actually used this. This is a new purchase. Origin normally I just use this and this has got me by for all the connections I've needed to make. But this only goes up to a um, 16mm squared, so like a 6 gauge. Um, or 6 by S. Uh, but now yeah, this is like a this is a 2 gauge cable, the 35mm squared. Um, so yeah, that definitely wasn't going to cut it. You can get bigger crimpers. But I've seen a few a few people use these and I thought I'd give it a go. Um, yeah. So the idea is you just gotta strip back your insulation off the cable. I just find a Stanley works quite well. Try not to go too deep, like you can sort of see when it just sort of starts to break away. And you just push down a little bit more, it comes away. Pop that off like that. You sort of go about the, the depth of that. Give a little twist. You want a good amount of heat shrink, don't skimp on that. Nice solid connection. That looks like looks pro. And then like that. And you just push that all in there. Like that. You want to get all the wires in there, you don't want any of them coming out. A little twist helps. And you just make sure it's all the way in. And then you get your crimper. So you just lock the crimper off. Sit it over on there. So you sort of just, just grab it. So that's got the lug. And then just make sure that's all the way in. Yep. And now don't move anything. Just pump. Until the gap closes up all the way there. Take off the pressure. And all that. A pro connection. Now I go along as well and I just nip it down the bottom. See the jaws aren't the full depth. I just like to crimp it there that way. You're utilizing all the the terminal. That's it, look at that. Beautiful. Nice solid connection. Once your heat shrink comes on. That's the finished product. How good is that? So for this install, I'm just using some MIDI fuse. MIDI fuse boxes, these are neat. They give you the 6mm post terminals, little cover. 
if you're using big cable like I am, like the two to two gauge here, um, you just got to trim out the outside to get around the terminal lug. But you get a nice, nice block that you can screw to a panel, and then the fuse sits in there with your terminations. But that's sitting in nice. Cable running down in there. I'm just going to terminate that over here. So what I've got on this side, that's the negative buzz there. I've been wiring up all my negatives too, so I don't have all my negatives going back to the shunt and just being messy, so it's just all come here. I also grabbed a positive buzz bar set up. So that big cable coming from the battery is going to go to one side, and then from this side it's going to feed the Red Arc battery manager and also an auxiliary fuse panel down here. But yeah, so I've got it fused on this cable, but I'm also going to be fusing each individual feed so I don't overload those cables as well. So let's get that let's get that in and sorted. Now I'm just hooking up the red arc unit. We're going from the buzz bar that I've got set up down there. So the thing I like about the red arc as well is this connector. So I've just got it sitting in there loosely and then make all my terminations here. And then the final last thing will just be to click it in nice and big connections handling a six gauge cable so now i just gotta get some cables from the drawbar so the car can get some dc into the red arc unit i'm gonna go on six gauge and i'm gonna run the same just for the solar because it's just gonna go to an anderson plug just tucked outside onto the chassis somewhere so i can clip it in and um to protect it and keep the water out i'm just gonna run it through a cable gland and fill it with silicon on the outside so i think i gotta figure it out now just where that gland is it's gonna be nice we've got I'll have cables come up, I'll have some cables coming into the red arc here and then I'll have some earths going onto that buzz bar so it'll be nice and clean. So what I'll do is I'm just going to, first I'll smash out a small hole, go, go back underneath the van and check it's not coming out in the wrong space. And then I'll open it up with a bigger, bigger drill. So I'll have some cables run up through there. Beautiful. Let's get, so yeah, let's get that sorted, eh? So now I've just got to go along, clean the setup up here, connect these two to the buzz bar, and then we should be pretty much good to go. So let's get this sorted, eh? Alright, so I've got all my connections done up uh, it's looking looking really good got all the fuses in and um my little remote monitor started beeping at me so we'll go check out what that is hopefully it's good news so it's just asking for Language here, press right to confirm. So yeah, English. Confirm battery settings, yes. So standards um, gel battery, 80 amp hour, so we'll change that. So right to edit, down to lithium. And then I'm running 120, oh, up, 120 air power is next so that's the old settings new settings let's confirm that hit right so we want celsius or fahrenheit australia we want celsius so let's set the date i'm gonna go time and so now it's just calculating the battery I haven't plugged in the 240 yet, but I'll plug that in and I'll also test my solar and car just to make sure all my connections are correct. Sweet, so we'll, we'll let that calculate. Right, so now that's all calculated for the battery. One thing to note is that it has to be plugged into a charge source while it's um, calibrating. Um, so it puts it through like a full charge cycle to make sure the battery is fully charged and that's how it determines when it's at its full state of charge. So, recommended to plug in the AC, but it will do it from solar or your vehicle input. It'll probably just be a bit slower. 
So I recommend a plug-in AC to get it through that process. And once it's done, you'll see a screen that's similar to this, which is just maintaining 100% full charge. So at the moment, I've only got a, my solar panel plugged in. Tells you the voltage of the panel there. I don't have um, it plugged in at home or the car. At the moment, it's not needing any power from the BMS, but I'll put some loads on and we'll see what's happening there. So yeah, because it's not drawing any solar, it's not registering any. So let's get a load happening and we'll and we'll see what happens. So I've just turned the water pump on in the background. So if we go back to the this screen, show to see, yeah, it's one and. 4.8 volts to run that pump. My panel is currently delivering 5 amp, putting a bit back into the battery, and that's what the BMS does. It just works out where the solar is going to go. Currently pumping in 85 watts of power, nearly 90 watts going in, which isn't too too bad considering the panel. Yeah, 5.8. So, yeah, that's good. That's what you want. Yeah, it's a wrap on the video, guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed watching the install. Gave you a few ideas on how you can set up your van to support a lithium setup. We'll take, it, we'll take this van away and we'll put it through its paces and hopefully it keeps up with our power demands. And I'll do another video um, review on the system and any niggles I don't like about it. But at the moment, first impressions, everything's looking pretty damn good. I'm real happy now. It's all in one system to take over for the 240 charging, DC charging, and um, solar charging, it's all on one unit, all on that monitor. It's logged, so I can go back and have a look at it after a drive and stuff like that. So yeah, pretty happy. Make sure you check out my other videos. Like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments what you want to see a video of if I haven't explained something in proper detail. And if you want to see a full overview of all those components that I've installed, jump on, check out video number one. I go in depth to all the um, all the appliances that I fitted and why I didn't choose another brand and why this was fit for my setup and the limitations of this setup. Right, guys, I'll see you in the next video.